Babe Kraus, an All-American defenseman for Hobart and the coach of his alma mater for 37 years. Roy Simmons Sr., like Kraus, a member of the Lacrosse Hall of Fame and the head coach at Syracuse for 39 years. Kraus and Simmons, they adorn the trophy for which Syracuse and Hobart will play next on Super Sports. On the right wing, with a streak of speed, Powell comes on in, fans on their feet, SCORE! Oh my goodness, what a move by the Carthage Comet! Sound time, good ball movement by oh, great Hobart, and a terrific save by Gemma. Oh, that was dead on. The Orangemen beat number two, John Hopkins, 14-13. Sports presents from the Carrier Dome, Syracuse Lacrosse with Hobart taking on the Orangemen. The Hobart State's been ranked number 10. Syracuse is ranked number 6. The State's with a record of 8 and 2. Syracuse is also 8 and 2. Hello, everybody. I'm Rob King along with Dale Drypolcher. And Dale, we expect a run and gun game much like we had last year. One of the keys for this game for Hobart can Nathan Roos continue to score? Nathan Roos is the returning top scorer from last year. He's in the same form he was last year. He's got 35 points, 26 goals, and 9 assists. He's from Australia. He has a little bit of a, a different kind of style to him, more like the, the box, kind of like the Gates from Canada. So he's a very, very tough senior, a guy they depend on a lot. Now, the real matchup is going to be interesting because John Glatzel's a freshman. They've had some injuries. Glatzel, a highly recruited kid out of Maryland, is going to match up with him. Glatzel's going to have to shut him down or at least hold him down under his game average last year. I think he had seven points, five goals, and two assists. So it's going to be a good matchup, and Glatzel as a freshman is going to have his hands full. But I think it's going to be a great game. I was down in the field. Both teams very excited about this one. This should be a great game. It's a great rivalry. Take a look at the polls and what it means for both teams. Hobart coming in probably in need of a big victory, ranked number 10. Syracuse not only needs a victory here, they need one against Georgetown later this week. They want to get in that top four. They want to get the bye. This is an important game. And as I said, both teams really want this game badly. Down in the field, you can really feel Tension is palpable, as they say. The Kraus Simmons Trophy, what they're fighting for. Syracuse lost the first one in 1986 to Hobart. They have won the last 11 in a row. Syracuse Lacrosse is brought to you by Brian Lacrosse. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. Syracuse taking on Hobart, getting set to begin here in just a moment. We're going to take you through the starting lineups for each team. We begin with the Hobart. Statesman, and it's BB, Roost, Wale, Petranchik, Breslin, and Mitchell on defense for the Statesman. Gardner, Cottrell, and Villano. Polakowski is the netminder, and he is a good one. 63%, one of the best in the nation, sixth, in fact, in that department. And for the Syracuse Orangemen, their starting lineup looks like this Ryan and Casey Powell, Devin Darcangelo, Matt Kataya, Tim Burns, and Ira Vanderpool. On defense, it's Rule, Glatzel, Sheedy, Jason Gephard in goal, and Jason, after a midseason slump, performed spectacularly against Massachusetts in their last win, Syracuse's win, on Sunday. So take a look at the series note, and these two teams go back a long time. Syracuse leads, you can see 57, 24, and 2. They have won 11 straight since the Krause Simmons Trophy was first put into play in 1986. They've won 11 of those 12 meetings in 1986. Hobart won the first one in a shocker down in Geneva. We're just set to get underway here for the opening faceoff. And the two teams squaring off. As Jason Deniker taking the draw for Syracuse and Hobart comes away with it. That was Alex Mitchell taking the draw for them. So Hobart, and they uh, said B.J. O'Hara did that controlling the ball is a key against Syracuse. Everybody knows that. It's very difficult to do. We saw Loyola winning all those face-offs and being successful earlier in the year, Dale. Absolutely. I think Syracuse uh, against uh, the Massachusetts Miniman, a lot more aggressive than we had seen him in, in uh, weeks previously, and I think really found a new kind of level for their game. Right now, uh, this guy right here had a great game last week, number 30. Uh, Matt Alexander just did a super job, and uh, they need a lot out of him, too. Hobart moving the ball patiently around the perimeter. They'll get up and run. They like the running game, but it's a matter of getting good shots, they say. And they're going to get one right here. Quick shot, and it's wide. First shot of the game by Eric Petranchuk, their fine midfielder. He has plenty of backup there, and it will go back to the statesman. They use Roots as kind of a, uh, as a little decoy, and he got rid of the ball. Petranchuk took the shot. Not really a good one on the cage, but they have it back. 
And this is Breslin working. Breslin being checked there by Matt Alexander. Let's see if we can get his name right throughout the broadcast. <laughs> and not mistakenly call him John Matthews. Having trouble seeing the digits from up here. Maybe he should get my eyes checked. Eric Petranchik now going to work, moving into the slot. Unleashes to Jared Beebe. Beebe local product, moving around. Big check, but it bounces right out. And Petranchik will control, or thought he was going to control. He's checked hard there. Still a loose ball. Syracuse trying to come up with it. A big collision. We're going to have a penalty as Casey Powell was absolutely run down by Alex Mitchell. So Syracuse will go on a man up situation. Check Jeff Lowe, 15. He's a football player, just come out and does a nice job of controlling the ball, then just taps the ball away, knocks it toward the midfield line, and there you see the run at, at Paul. And of course, he's, they might as well go out and put like Day Glow uh, bullseye on him because he gets it every game. But of course, now they're up for a minute. So that's a first man up opportunity for Syracuse. Yeah, that tap by Lowe is not a tap I'd want to take, I don't think. That was a pretty good hit also. Yep. So Syracuse on the offensive for the first time as we are almost two minutes into the game and finally they move into the, their own offensive zone. Quick shot by Casey Powell goes high and wide, but it'll come back to Syracuse. Casey getting one off early. Just talking to the coach earlier about uh, Polakowski, the goalie, they said he's a big guy, weighs about 240, so he really fills up the cage and they want to make sure they get to him early. And, and they just do, Casey, uh, no, they're oh. saying no goal, it was blocked. Casey yep. Powell raised his arms, thought he had one. Now Hobart trying to clear, Vanderpool giving chase. That's going to be a push or a trip. I know they're going to say uh, it's yep. carried out of bounds. Out of bounds. Absolutely. By Rich Schwanke, the midfielder. Checked hard there by Vanderpool. Check out this replay here and what looked like a goal by Casey Powell. Powell just sneaks from behind. Let's see, left hand shot. There, there's a bowl. That was hard to see. It, came, it, it it bounced out. You know, lacrosse balls do bounce in different little sections that look like it bounced in and bounced out, but it was that quick. We couldn't even see it on the replay. So we have to go with the official who was there. It's still 0-0. Quick pass wide, and uh, Ryan Powell tries to pick it up and does. He's going to be called for being in the crease. Ryan likes to wander in that crease and gets yeah. the call here. Well, I'd be interested to see that again because Kalikowski did a nice job of closing down the angle there, Dale, but uh, it sure looked like that squeaked through, didn't all, it? All it's got to do is cross that line, and does, if it comes back out, it still crossed it, so that's all it needs. Oh, so. what an aggressive check by Casey Powell. Up to Ryan. Ryan fake shoots and scores. Oh, boy. Casey Powell, a tremendous job taking it away from Rich Schwenke and going up to brother Ryan for the goal. There's Kalikowski. One of the things that... Uh, he didn't get much of a chance to see as this shot is Ryan picks it up and fakes low and goes high after he got the assisting pass from his brother. So Ryan Paul, 27th goal, but a nice assist by Casey. And uh, I guess that, that bouncing ball becomes a moot point. It cleared out the uh, penalty, by the way. There was only one second left, and it is a man-up goal but uh, there was only one second left in the penalty. A man up goal, but not one that uh, comes in the typical fashion where right. you set it up and go. That was just a great check by Casey Powell. Shows he can do it all. B.J. O'Hara talking about him, said he's just such a competitor, so tenacious. Not only is he skilled, oh. have great size, and Syracuse comes away with it, and looking to set up, and they'll try to go all the way back, and it gets past Josh Rule, and Hobart will be able to set up in their offensive zone. Abrams probably should have just tried to throw that down to an attack man, forced it a little bit instead of going all the way back. He missed the pass to Rule, and now Hobart gets the ball right in the Syracuse, their offensive area. That was Jason Wale getting going to Bob Toner now as Hobart is making some substitutions already. This is Buck, and uh, he flips it up. Moving in, shooting and scoring is Rich Schwanke. Well, we expected the scoreboard to be lit up tonight, and uh, we are just over three minutes into the game, and it's 1-1. Schwenke did a really nice job. Um, he just comes on a sweep. He faked, tossing the ball, and Abrams does everything but mug him, and he could not get a stick on his stick. And you're going to see Richard Schwenke, 5'9", 190, uh, 80 pounds, I should say, just makes a nice shot. Gebhardt's offside at the left-handed goalie from Bishop Ludden High School. Another face off, Jason Deneker comes away with it, but he is being assaulted there, and Hobart finally does come away with it. 
Moving in. Oh, a big hit from behind, and that's going to be a penalty. Hobart scored, but after the flag, and the whistle had blown. Yeah, that was, uh, you know what that's like in, in, in uh, football? It's like a defensive back tackling somebody after he's been beat because they know that it's just going to be a, a mercy shot on the goalie here. So when he gets down that far, they're just going to take him down right there and say, you know what, <laughs> we'll let you earn it on a man up, but we're not going to give it to you right there. So number 24, Seglia is out for 30 seconds. Not a bad penalty to take at that point, Rob. As I said, it's a sure goal. All you gave up was 30 seconds. Well, there has been no lack of intensity. Uh, certainly, you talked about this. You see the man up, Hobart, 50%. Wow, that is a great statistic. Hobart moving the ball around the perimeter now. Into the slot, big wind and fire saved by, I don't know if it got through to get part no, or not. No, it did not, it did not. 26 got it to Ackerman. Devin Ackerman, big stick midi. And now Syracuse will carry in and they'll go on the attack. This is Matt Alexander. Alexander looking, carries in, shoots, save. Casey Powell there quickly on the rebound. He opts to reset. Yeah, she's, Alexander just said, I'm going out. I'm a defensive specialist. I'm leaving, Casey. Settle it down, take it behind, play a little catch, and that's exactly what happened. And they're going to get Cordisco in. Jeff Cordisco, that is. He comes yep. into the game. Chris is already out there, his brother. This is Coyone. Coyone will... Head back out to Jeff Cordisco now. Cordisco moving in. That was a nice play by Alexander. Took a quick shot, but then you're right. He mentioned that he, he knew he wasn't supposed to be out there. Ooh, Casey checked from behind. Ball still up in the air. He doesn't know where it is. Finally comes away with it again. Boy, he's so good on those ground balls. So here's a reset again. Jeff Cordisco moving it around to Kataya. This is Matt Kataya. Had a very good game on Sunday against Massachusetts. Now moving in. Going oh. to the middle. Saved by Polakowski. Ryan Powell will go back and be the first one there, and Syracuse retain possession. So Palikowski has shown a couple of very good moves and goal, a couple of excellent saves. Absolutely. Just uh, pounce that out, see his hands go across. Makes up some room in that crease, too. Casey yeah. has it checked away. We talked about that matchup with Austin Gardner, and Gardner oh. did a pretty good job so far. Oh, that's a lot being checked, but oh my goodness, this is just a physical game. Both teams going at it hard, and BB can't save it, and it'll go back to Hobart. Well, I told you, I was down in the field, and they really were kind of woofing at each other, just to kind of a, looked like good naturedly, but this was uh, this was a heck of a smack right here. Uh, this is David Kane, and he yep. Kane wasn't able to uh, <laughs> to get it through the entire Syracuse defense as they come up with a big check and cough it back up. Now Syracuse will try to clear their zone. Long pass ahead to Sheedy, and ahead to Chris Cordisco. Syracuse leads in the shots, five to three. Both teams have had quality opportunities. Quick pass from Casey Powell to Kataya. Another save by Polakowski. Ryan Powell will give chase. He is there first, and it remains Hobart ball. Well, the you shot. Can, yep, good job. We are so used to hearing when there's a call and it goes against Syracuse, the moan of the crowd, but yeah. a, not, a lot of Hobart fans on hand not here. Not that far up the throughway, Rob. <laughs> Boy, Polakowski is really turning in a big game. Pass out here now to Kataya. Kataya moving in. Quick pass. Goes wide. Quick wind and fire there by Jeff Cordisco. Doesn't convert. Coyone now moving in. His shot goes wide. Casey Powell is going to be there, and Syracuse will throw it in again. Starting to get the shots in the backup. They've got the, still got the second midfield in. Six minutes of the last 1-1 game. Casey Powell going way out to Coyone. Quick shot, and he scores. Matt Coyone. He's kind of due, I think. Coyone took a long shot as he gets the pass from Powell way out up on top. But look, nobody there. It's a good shot. It's a real good shot. Starts low, stays about waist high. Watch Coyone go with the sidearm here. There it goes, and it starts a lot. It's a riser. You call him a quail ball. Comes up, starts low, goes right up. Coyone, you can't miss him. Long-haired guy right there. Super job. Only his third goal of the season, as I said, a little bit overdue, but that second midfield unit comes up with a goal for Syracuse. Now off the faceoff. We got a talk here. You got two guys going for the same ground ball. That's going to be off Syracuse. Schwenke and Deniger battling initially on the faceoff there, and it will go to Hobart, and they will take possession. 8.45 remains in the first. Syracuse leads 2 to 1. This is Schwenke who had the goal, and he's set to throw it in for Hobart. The official decides play can begin, and he says so now, and we are back to live action. 
Trevor Buck with the ball for the Statesman. Buck going to work on Matt Alexander. Buck looking for some room, can't find any. Now good help defensively by Syracuse and a race for a loose ball. Picked up there, big hit, but Safarelli retains possession. Here comes Matt Safarelli moving in on the attack. Safarelli down low to Kataya. Kataya shoots, fake scores! Oh, a beautiful run by Safarelli. Then he goes to Kataya, and Kataya puts the Orangemen up 3-1 to one with 8.16 remaining in the first period. Safarelli ought to get an assist and a half on that. That was just a super job. One, he came up with a ground ball. Two, watch the pass as he does it like at an oblique 45 degree angle. And he could tie it. When he gets like this, you know he's going to put it in. He takes Polakowski up and down and then puts it in, but that was just a super pass. Watch it right here. Look at that pass. He put it right around a guy, and then Kutaya puts it up and down, and then finally in the cage, 3-1 Syracuse. He had uh, Polakowski looking like Pete Towns in there with the legs spread and the windmill going. Hey, Polakowski reacting in midair. I mean, uh, he's shown some impressive moves for a big fella, but Syracuse leads 3-1, and they win the faceoff. They got to get it over there. A little problem. Now there's the clear. Long looping pass to Tim Burns. Now Burns looking to go to work. Settles it back down, and they'll go to Casey Powell behind the net. And Syracuse works it around the perimeter to Tim Burns. Burns to Vanderpool. Syracuse leads 3 to 1, 740 mark in the first period. Played almost half the first period now. Syracuse, uh, look at that statistic. That's one Hobart needs to win to have any chance, I think, of winning this game. Oh, the pass to Burns eludes him, goes over his head. Boy, 9 to 2, that's a big advantage as well, we this, take a look at Tim Burns heading off. You know, it goes in spurts, and uh, sometimes you get the ground balls. Uh, Hobart was doing well off the faceoffs getting the ground balls, but uh, Syracuse has picked them up when it counted. And none better than that Safarelli one that gave him the assist uh, on that last goal from Syracuse. But right now, we will put a little pressure on the Hobart Statesman on their clear. Not much, a little token pressure. Hobart gets it across. Look for that pressure to be increased as the game goes on. Just sending a message early. Here's Petrancic now. Working it around the perimeter. This is Breslin, Jamie Breslin. Now they're really kind of running in isolation now. They're clearing out for him. They see if Breslin can go one-on-one. -on -one. Alexander is so steady defensively. He has been terrific. Difficult to imagine him getting beaten too often in this situation. Standing up his man. <laughs> now coming up with a check and another one. Breslin retains control. Finally gets some room, but still just hacked at and whacked at. Now the race for the loose ball. Oh, what a burst of speed. And a huge hit on Ryan Powell. He is run over on a big hit by Alex Mitchell. Take a listen to this hit now. Oh, that's your audio daily double. <laughs> it is right on the melon of Ryan Powell, who is a tough kid. And I think uh, liable to stick his nose in there next time, too. By the way, Abrams knocked that ball loose. Number 43 did a nice job. Feed the crease. They hoped that the goalie was screened. Got a quick shot off. They had him screened, but good reaction by Gebhardt, but it's going to stay Hobart ball. What a burst of speed Josh Rule showed, too, going for that ball. For yeah. a big guy, he can really motor. 6'6", yeah, 230 or so. Take a look at the shots on goal. Syracuse, the upper hand. They lead 3-1. to one. Have outshot Hobart by nearly the same margin, 9-4. to four. Statistically speaking, of course. Yeah, right, not mathematically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> now Hobart moving it around. They uh, have found themselves with very few fast break opportunities and had to try to work off of the set on the uh, half court here, so to speak, half field. That was Nathan Roost, who has been unable to get anything going at all. Had five goals and two assists last year. Big check, and Hobart retains possession, much to the dismay of the... Syracuse faithful here, B.J. O'Hara looking on. Interesting, we, we kind of featured that matchup at the beginning with Glatzel and Roost, and as you said, it's been kind of quiet. Obviously, it's still very early, but they've done a good job of uh, keeping their leading scorer out of position. It's Petranchik now. Looking down low again, and another big check. Rule. Rule going to work on defense, and another loose ball. Now we have a stop and a whistle. Let's do the call. Push in the back. It's going to be Ole gets right there, yeah. 
That, that, would, that would justify. That would be like in a, an example of a push if you're going to put a picture in the book. Abrams, <laughs> nice save, though. Oh, Gephardt with a good save and then a nice long pass and Syracuse will run. Oh, but uh, a little breakdown of communication between Sheedy and Kataya. And Sheedy's pass off the mark and Hobart will throw in again. And this is Bernie Cottrell as Roy Simmons looks on. Well, it certainly from Hobart's perspective could be a lot worse. They've been dominated statistically but only trailed by two on the scoreboard. This is Rich Schwanke. Schwanke now giving it up to Trevor Buck. Buck being guarded again by Matt Alexander. Now a little switch and see if Buck wants to go to work on Marshall Abrams. Instead he will pass off. Roos kind of hanging Tony. around behind the cage, maybe looking for a sneak. Tony with a quick pass to Jared Beebe. Beebe a little fella moving in. Boy, just sticks a whacking down there as Trevor Buck went down. Here's BB being guarded by Abrams. Looking, gets a screen. Fires, tough angle, hit the side of the net, looked like. No, didn't even get that far. I think Rule got a stick on it again. That's a good play. So Andrews looking to clear. Good coverage, good pressure by Hobart. They are really putting a good ride on. Syracuse gets it over, but they're taking most of that 10 seconds. This is Sheedy now. Syracuse in the zone, and looks like they're trying to get some offensive help out there. Well, they want to get set up. The last time they threw the pass away, I think they were trying to force the fast break. But they're going to settle it down and get their, get their people in, and uh, that's exactly what they do as they, they move in. D'Arcangelo comes in. Arcangelo and Burns out there, along with Ryan and Casey Powell, Kataya and Vanderpool. This is Kataya now with the ball. Long pass out to Vanderpool, and Vanderpool will set the offense. Going on the move. Quick pass in the slot. Shoots and scores. Oh, a beautiful play to Devin D'Arcangelo. And the crowd here, the Syracuse faithful at least, enjoying themselves as Syracuse jumps to a 4-1 to one lead. Give D'Arcangelo credit. He was a finisher, but Vanderpool, watch how many guys he draws here. When they slide over, he makes the perfect pass, and it's just like shooting fish in a barrel there for D'Arcangelo. As you can see, three guys slid, and Polakowski, not much of a chance when somebody's six yards away from you. And D'Arcangelo, 19th goal of the season, gives Syracuse a three-goal lead with 3.22 left in the quarter number one. Face-off starts again. Hobart gets it. Fast break, unsettled situation for the Statesman. Quick shot saved by Gephardt. Still out in front, and they shoot and score. This is Nathan Roost with his first goal of the game. Well, Syracuse had rung up three straight goals, and he set off the unsettled situation. Loose ball in front. Roost comes up with it and scores for the Statesman. You watch, they were trying to toss it to the goalie there. I think they were just, they thought he might have it, but Roost came up with the garbage goal, and they all count. It was a dandy by Roost. Watch, I thought they were just trying to flip it to their own goalie, and uh, it didn't work, and Roost just turns around and fires backhand, and that gives the number two to Hobart. Nice job by Roost. The leading scorer last year and so far this year. Face-off goes with the Syracuse sticks. Syracuse moving on the attack. Here's Ryan Powell now. And quickly, they will try to reset offensively. Quick shot by D'Arcangelo from a tough angle. And D'Arcangelo has it checked away from him, and Hobart gets it. And uh, really the action before Syracuse could set themselves offensively with their full complement of players. They've done that a couple of times, looking for the quick strike. I guess the secret is to know when you've got the advantage and when you don't. Yep, good point. It's a four to two game, 243 and counting remaining in the first. Take a look at the clears. Their team's pretty successful and Syracuse has been perfect. Hobart is one short and they're gonna have to hustle here. They do get it across. Oh, in the slot. Long lofting pass and great check there and it's gonna go back to Hobart. Jason Gephardt thought he was there first. Imploring the referee, but it's not gonna help. Very active crowd, both sides yelling, groaning, screaming. It's a good game. Oh, a lot of fun to beat a game like this when uh, you have a big crowd roaring equally for both teams. To the Illinois-Missouri game, they call that the border war in basketball. That was like that for years. Yeah. This is Alex Mitchell now with the Hobart Statesman. They're trailing four to two. They've really been dominated statistically here in the first period, and I think B.J. O'Hara's gotta be pretty pleased that they're only down two goals at this point. 
last goal, they got a second goal, was, uh, I certainly don't want to denigrate the goal, but it wasn't like a set play. It was just a bouncing ball, and uh, Syracuse was in the right position. Let's see if they can stop this one. Breslin, the BB tough angle saved by Gephardt. Oh, we have a whistle. A flag. The flag, and the, there's going to be an infraction on Matt Soffarelli. And Syracuse will be a man down. Illegal check, uh, Soffarelli. And you'll see Soffarelli, let's see. Yeah. Upper right hand portion of his head. Upper right hand portion of his head. Also, that's what made it illegal. <laughs> so Matt sits down for a minute with 144 remaining, and a golden opportunity for Hobart as Roy Simmons looks on to get it down to four to three. And if they can settle down a little bit, always a big game for teams coming to the Carrier Dome. And if they can withstand the early onslaught and find themselves in the game, they've got themselves a better chance of winning. Good point. Yeah, you're right. It is. A, but you know. Hobart, of course, plays here every year. It's, uh, I shouldn't say it every year. I think it's uh, every third year it goes back to uh, to Hobart. So uh, they do play here a bit more than other teams. So uh, And they bring a lot of their own fans. So it's uh, almost like a kind of a half a home game for them. And the crowd roaring as we really, I mean, we're hearing chants. It's almost like a European soccer game, which we haven't heard a lot of in the Dome so far. And Hobart almost losing one there carelessly. Except there's been more action in the first quarter than there is in the whole European <laughs> soccer game. That's, a, that's the only difference there. Quick pass. Roos doesn't find anything. Here's BB. BB going wide. Hobart beginning to move it quickly now. Ooh, they might have been advised for one Good more job. quick pass. And boy, Gee. Nathan Roost wasn't on the uh, really wasn't really on the ball there. He thought his man had that covered Petranchik and Sheedy with a good hustle, as you mentioned, and it's going to go back to Syracuse, so they've got a great opportunity to kill off the final 20 seconds of this penalty. Watch the amount of pressure that Hobart's going to put on here. There's still a, a, a man up. Oh, Alexander runs all the way across and retains possession. Oh, Matt Alexander, a terrific job moving in, finally poked away from him now. Hobart's got it back. They're coming back the other way, but a check from behind by Casey Powell. Here's Kataya now. We're even to set off. Take your time, guys. You're even. 40 seconds remaining. Ryan Powell looking to go on the attack. Right. Powell will stop and wait. Syracuse getting all their attack out there. Right. In, in 30 essence, seconds remaining. Two men down there while they're waiting for the guys to get in. Ryan going to force, or Casey forced that little bit. Jane's possession. They're looking, sees the opening, moves in, shoots, saved again. Good job. To stop and play a whistle, and it looks like it's going to go back to Syracuse as Casey's rolling around on the ground. Yep, it must have been an illegal hit. It looked like he was near the crease. Polakowski, nice save. He's got great reaction time for a big guy. Watch him. Bang! Up. Where'd the ball go? And then you see afterwards, after the shot, it was a hit on Powell. So, 13 seconds remaining. Ryan Powell looking to move on the attack. Spinning in, looking. Doesn't see anybody. Tries to go to Casey, knocked down in front. Forced that pass. That was not a real good pass. Long outlet pass, and that's going to do it for the first hey, period. Well, an action packed oh, first period. One. Syracuse leading by a score of four to two. Six different players have scored for the Statesman and for Syracuse. Tim Burns being attended to over by the sideline. Syracuse leading by a score of four to two. We expect the action to continue. Stay tuned. We'll have more Hobart Syracuse across on Super Sports right after this. Uh, we've worked really hard in the last couple of years to really um, remind our students of the, of the deep tradition of, of Hobart Lacrosse, 100 years in fact, this year, um, and the, the fact that we're one of the few programs along with Syracuse that have over 600 wins. Um, so in that perspective, the, the Cross Simmons Trophy is, is very, very significant, and we would love nothing better than have that thing sitting in Bristol Gym for a year, you know, and, and enjoy it, because it's been a long time. B.J. O'Hara said the winner of the Krause Simmons Trophy might be the team that gets the better goaltending, and Fred Pawlikowski for Hobart has uh, made some good saves. He has made some good saves. He's uh, got quick reactions, and he's going to be busy for three more quarters. He's got four saves so far. Syracuse, a little problem before uh, getting the faceoff on the wings. They put Casey Powell in, and now they got it. Deniker's got it. Score 4-2. Syracuse doubles him up at this point. Deniker does his job, comes off as Syracuse gets him back on. So they put Casey Paul up on the wing, help out on those ground balls off the faceoff, Rob. And Chris Cordesco checks in, so does Matt Coyone. 
This is Kataya with the ball, and he will flip it out to Kayoni. Syracuse leading 4 to 2. Kayoni moving in quickly on the attack. His shot goes wide. Casey Powell there for the backup. Syracuse retains possession at the 14 28 mark. They lead 4 to 2. They have really had the upper hand statistically ground ball, shots, and so on, but uh, it is only a two goal game. This is Chris Cordisco moving in now. Cordisco, quick left hand oh. shot, he scores! Chris Cordisco, boy, that's a. You don't want to say it's a soft goal necessarily, right. but it didn't look like <laughs> impending doom, certainly, Robart. Cordisco takes a left hand shot. A little, well, watch Polakowski. He's screened. You know what? You don't need to take that hard a shot. Watch the bodies in front of him, Rob. You might be able to see him here at the last minute. Yeah, you see that? Actually, I take it back. He wasn't screened. He was on his offside, but on that side, he should have been able to track that perhaps a little bit better. But Cordisco puts it by him, and I could tell that he was a little chagrined, the goalie, Polakowski, after that ball went in. Fast break now off the faceoff. Oh, quick shot. Gephardt makes the save, and... Syracuse will come right back the other way, looking to move on the attack. They carry it, and this is low. The football player moving in. Who, boy, just uh, <laughs> battering his way forward, trying to run over Rich Swanky. These guys look like midgets to, to him, I'm sure. He, he's from, from spring football. Yeah, it must be. He's the, he's the wide receiver doing the down and outs in football. Must be nice to uh, run over some people. Here's Ryan Powell now moving in. Powell shoots, goes wide, and Casey Powell there for the backup. Boy, Ryan saw a little opening shot through there, and he and four statesmen converge in the goal at the same time. You think they attract a lot of attention? They, they are just, you know, they're just like a, a, a quarterback on a wishbone team. They're going to take a shot at every chance they get. Oh, that one. Casey Powell moves in, shoots, and scores. Austin Gardner slamming his stick down in frustration. Casey Powell will do that to you. Yeah, he will. They're a little, they're a little upset now as the game starts to slip a little bit here as Paul, nice move there on Gardner. And when he gets inside, he just puts it down on the big guy and Paul Akowski can't do it. And that's the timeout as Syracuse goes quick goals. That's the one you want to say, let's cool him off a little. Let's take a timeout. 38th goal of the year for Casey Powell. 13-34 remains in the second period. Syracuse leads 6-2. If they continue this pace, they will win the Kraus Simmons Trophy for the 12th straight year. And according to Coach Roy Simmons, that's just fine with him because he puts a lot of importance on this game. A lot of members of the Kraus family are still in the area, and I know that they feel like I do about it. It's very important. And this is one of those particular traditional events. So if you're home it has nothing to do with national anything. It's just these two schools have not had for many years. Now Roy Simmons looking on has to be pleased with his team's performance, and he has to be pleased with two goals on two shots this period. B.J. O'Hara can't be too happy with that, but Casey Powell is going to erupt, and uh, take a look at this move by Casey. Austin Gardner goes out with Casey, and Casey doesn't even roll. He just cuts back inside. Paul Akowski saying, geez, this is really going to be difficult, uh, <laughs> and it was. Uh, Powell puts it in, and uh, perhaps the best cross player in the world. He's got one goal, two assists, and 6-2 to score. 13-34 left in this second quarter. And back to the faceoff circle, and Joe Liska out there for the first time. For Vestal for Hobart. Can't win it, though. And Abrams Syracuse up carries in. This is Marshall Abrams, and he shoots and scores. Marshall Abrams, nobody picked him up, and he just shot it and scored. Rob, you got to pick up a six-foot stick. You get running with it, and if you can cock it and, and, and not get checked, you can get a heck of a shot off because it comes from way up high. Watch Marshall Abrams. He knows how much zip that ball gets on it, and that ball is hard to stop coming out of the defensive stick. And as you said, nobody got a stick on him, and he knows the kind of push he can get on that, and uh, so does now Polakowski. 7-2, to four straight goals by Syracuse. Abrams' third goal of the season. Ooh, a big hit there, loose ball, still loose. Glatzel will get it out. Oh, nice work by Glatzel, using his stick like a broom and coming away with it. Pass up to Lowe, still loose. Lowe trying to control and does now, finally. Syracuse needs to get some men on the attack, so Kataya will patiently wait for some players to come out. Maybe not so patiently now, looking to move in the attack. Kataya moving in. Let's it back out. Good check there. This is Brian Soliday with the ball. Not now Casey's got him. He's swing all the way back out to midfield and go on the attack. We've got Austin Gardner, the freshman. 
gets a little help there as Powell takes a peek. Quick pass in front. Knocked aside. Ryan Powell giving chase now. He comes up with it. He's checked. Still has oh. it. And Ryan, just in the very corner of the playing field, controls and flips a long pass out to John Matthews. This is Kataya now. Fake the pass. Nice fake. I was looking around to see who passed it to. <laughs> This is Soliday, and uh, over now to Stuart Smith, who scored his first goal of the season Sunday against Massachusetts, the sophomore. This is a third midfield. This is uh, this is impressive that you can get three guys in or three lines in and get some. That's a trip and get some production out of them. And they not only are taking time off the clock, but they're getting penalties against him and gets the man down, man up team in. Take another look at the trip. Kataya taken down. Well, that's another one. They should put that in the book as a picture for a trip. 24 got him. That's a McLean. Christian McLean, but put him right between both legs and brought him down. I don't think he did it on purpose, but uh, still that real cost of the minute. And this game dangerously close to getting out of hand for the Statesman already. And they suffered that big loss to Duke. 19-6. It was 7-5 late in the third. Right. And then Duke just went on a huge run on them and they obviously need to prevent that kind of run today against Syracuse, although we might be in the midst of seeing one right now. D.J. O'Hara told me that it was a close game, and he said when they got the reserves in, it uh, kind of went south for him. But... This is Coyone. Coyone down to Kataya. Oh, that's Ryan Powell, I beg your pardon. Ryan Powell now over to Kataya. Kataya is checked, comes away with it. Over to Coyone. Syracuse very patiently working around. Amanda Cool. Still got 20 seconds. Powell. They haven't attempted a shot yet as Ryan Powell's pass is knocked down by Rich Schwenke. Syracuse still has not attempted a shot in the first 50 seconds of this minute-long penalty. As Ryan over to Kataya, Kataya to Vanderpool. Vanderpool to Tim Burns, Burns to Coyone, moving it around the perimeter. Quick pass to Ryan Powell, over to Vanderpool, his shot saved. And it's a, co a collision after the play. A totally unnecessary collision after the play as Dominic Latanzi went very aggressively after Ira Vanderpool, and uh, Vanderpool had already shot, and the save had already been made. So Syracuse gets possession back again. Penalty is over. Teams back at even strength. 10:44 remaining. Syracuse leads Hobart seven to two. Casey Powell being checked by Austin Gardner. Looking around, some screening going on as Syracuse tries to get somebody free. Now Ryan Powell has it. John Dusko, the assistant coach, he wants uh, Powell to take it in. Alex Mitchell working on Powell. Powell looking, goes over to Kataya. Kataya back to Powell. Syracuse working very patiently on offense. 10-15 in counting. Syracuse is the five goal lead. They've scored the game's last four goals. Here's Ryan Powell now. Ryan looking. Nick they scored the game's last three goals, I beg your pardon, they lead seven to two. Casey to Ryan, Ryan looking around, doesn't see anything. Comes back the other way, trying to bull his way in, and his pass as he's checked. Goes out over the end line, and Ira Vanderpool has some angry words for Ryan, who collects himself up off the carpet. And now Hobart will try to clear. Syracuse, uh, one department they are not leading in is turnovers. They've turned it over six times to three times for Hobart, the statesman. Quick shot off the post. Oh boy, Hobart can't buy a break right now. Right down on Syracuse. And possession goes back to Hobart. Boy, what a tough break by Hobart. A 30 second penalty now offside. against Syracuse, an offsides call. Check Let's it out. Let's see where that went. Oh, off the post. Yeah. Rich Schwanke with a bullet. And uh, that was passed. Oh, wait a minute. The, uh, is yeah. the penalty on Hobart? I yes. beg your pardon. Yep. It was past Jason Gephardt, but hit off the post. And that insult to injury, not only does Hobart not score, but B.J. O'Hara's team picks up a penalty. And so Syracuse with a chance to add to their 7-2 lead, a 30-second penalty. 9.30 mark in the second period with Hobart trailing 7-2. Man up goals. The Statesman uh, 0 for 2, but it is uh, Syracuse who has the man up right now. Goes for 
Syracuse. One for two. We'll keep in mind that 0 for two. And Hobart goes up on the man up. One for two, 50% ratio for Syracuse. Didn't get a shot off in the man up earlier in that event. Arcangelo now to Casey Powell. Casey Powell. Good, good shot by Anceloni, but no. wait a minute, I think no. a whistle before the shot. So Anceloni's shot will, his goal will not count. And it's going back to Hobart. <laughs> it's a moving pick. Say so what? What happened? That's a moving pick. So Anceloni uh, looking to add one there, getting a hug of uh, condolence from Matt Kataya. Take a look to pass over to Powell. Oops, right there. That's, see yeah. that right there? Did the you right see that portion yes. of the screen? Yep. Interference, uh, like it's like a basketball, like an illegal pick. As uh, the guy cleared out, but he took, he pushed the Hobart guy out with him, and you can't do that. We're going to get a timeout. So yeah, David Kane was the man that was going to be there defensively to try to stop Anselone's shot, but uh, since he was moved out of the way, he wasn't there. Right, and uh, you know. He, Regardless of what had happened, when you heard the whistle blow, no matter what happened, even if there wasn't a penalty, inadvertent whistle, it could not have been a goal. So Syracuse uh, a little upset, but uh, it looked like from what I saw, there was uh, it was a good call. So they will uh, have to go back to square one, I guess. B.J. O'Hara's team calling a timeout. Take a look at some of the scores from this past weekend that will have a bearing on the NCAA tournament. Duke running away from Hobart after the game had been close throughout. Maryland beating Rutgers. That really hurts Rutgers' chances. Hofstra hands Drexel their first loss of the season. Princeton rolls on. Hopkins beat Taus beats Towson, so you can probably kiss Towson's chances goodbye. And Georgetown beating Villanova. Georgetown up next for Syracuse. That's Dave another Urich. big game for the Orangemen. Dave Urich comes into town, the Georgetown coach. He's a coach at Hobart. He's familiar with the Dome. I talked to B.J. O'Hara about whether Hobart really needed to win these last two games. Now, he was mentioning to me that the the coaches, uh, when they decide who's going to get the selection tournament uh, process, does not really go by the polls. And he hopes that even if Syracuse, even if Hobart falls out of the top 12 with losses to Syracuse and Princeton, two of the top teams in the country, that they they still have hopes that they will get into the tournament. Well, yeah, that is. Uh, they may not go strictly by the polls, but uh, it gives you a pretty good indicator. Polakowski, Syracuse is going to jump Polakowski here, make him make the long pass. Syracuse leading 7-2, 8.39 remaining, and Syracuse putting the pressure on Hobart. Statesman getting in, finally. Good clear. Trevor Buck now moving. Trevor Buck on Matt Alexander. Matt Alexander get right in his pockets. Boy, he's an impressive defensive short stick. He sure is. Trevor Buck now moving in. Now they trade off, so Abrams picks up Buck and uh, Schwenke is being guarded by Alexander. Schwenke will try his luck, came right out of his stick. Alexander will scoop it up and try to carry over. Quick pass goes behind Marshall Abrams, but Abrams is able to corral it, and he'll carry it in. Maybe he can get it in deep enough, he figures. Oh, what a pass to Ryan Powell! Behind the back and scores! Oh, my! What a pass, what a goal! You know, I hate to say it, but I'm more impressed with the pass than the goal. The goal is great, but look at this pass. Just knew exactly where to put that ball on the carpet to get it to bounce that way. And of course, you know Ryan can take a behind the back shot, but look at where the pass was. That's absolutely magnificent. Incredible, skipping it off the carpet. That's a pass that's very difficult to execute outside. Yes, it's, it's hard to execute anywhere. There he is, Marshall Abrams. He's been playing real well lately. Goal and assist. Here's Alex Mitchell off the faceoff looking to move on the attack. Here's Mitchell now moving in. His long pass is deflected Abrams by guess it. who? Yeah, yeah, Marshall Abrams going to work still. Loose ball, Hobart still can't corral it. Deneker picks it up, but uh, that was after he simply shoved Chuck Wilbur to the ground and it'll go back to Hobart. Deneker, the face-off guy, has, uh, has done a pretty good job. I just thought he'd give a little push there. Look at Abrams, look at that. With those, you'd think those sticks would break the way they whomp them on the surface. There's a good look at the push. So <laughs> Deneker, Deneker got the ball, but couldn't elude the call. Excuse me, I want that. Yeah, right. <laughs> So now Hobart, boy, they're in desperate need of stemming the tide here. Jamie Breslin, Breslin moving in. Cut off there. Oh, and a long errant pass. It's going to roll all the way out to midfield. Fight for it. Kept oh, no. Zone. And uh, yeah, Syracuse is going to be offsides. 
That's a that's a call that is uh, not to the liking of the Hobart fans. And now, wait a minute, they're going to say it is a, a push, I believe. Well, but you know what? He wasn't really off sides because as long as your hands are on the stick, you're part of the stick, and that stick was on the ground. Now, if he put one of his hands in the ground to get up, that would have been off sides. Aren't you glad you learned that today? Yes, I, I am <laughs> glad I learned that. Here's Lowe now moving in. Lowe's shot goes wide. Ryan Powell there for the backup as Lowe uh, winds up falling face forward. And Lowe uh, looking around. Do you want me to check out? No. Stay in? No. Check out? No. I'm going to stay in. Tim Burns now has it to Vanderpool. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say they, they thought Lowe might have a little trouble making the transition from, from football to uh, lacrosse. Not in conditioning, but in, you know, strategy and, and stick work. And he doesn't look like he's lost much to me. He does a great job defensively. Well, you saw Vanderpool telling Tim Burns, slow it down. Let's get a good shot here. 6.30 remains in the second. Syracuse in command, leading 8-2 over the Statesman. Here's Casey Powell. Oh, he cuts it on Gardner. Looking, looking, fires left-handed just wide. Boy, he was trying to fit one through a mail slot there. Now Hobart trying to clear, and they finally do carry across. This is Alex Mitchell on the move. Mitchell being guarded by Vanderpool. Mitchell lost the ball, but it came back out to David Kane. Kane wants to get rid of it and get off the field, and he does that. Take a look at the shot. Syracuse 20 to 14. Jason DeWall. Started all last year, had foot surgery. He's number 44 for the Statesman. Trying to work his way slowly back into the lineup. Jason Wale, number 27, the freshman, has really filled in well. Quick shot here, never got through. Boy, Jason Gephardt has not had a big workout today, has he? Well, no, and you said it absolutely right. Never got through. That's about the third time it has not gotten through on one of their 14 shots. The defensemen have put their sticks and bodies in front. This is Rich Schwanke now. He has one of the two statesman goals. Nathan Roost has the other. Roost has not been much of a factor. Trevor Buck now. Buck looking. He will head back out to Alex Mitchell. Looks like Mitchell's going to clear the zone. And get another attack out there. Boy, for a guy that uh, is so dominant in scoring goals, Nathan Roost has not touched the ball a lot. Here's Here Roost now. Bruce shot goes up and over the crossbar, and Syracuse uh, Hobart will uh, will retain possession. It was just been a long time since Bruce to touch it. He got a great opportunity there. Tried to bounce it in. Maybe it uh, got in Geneva. That goes in, but off this uh, carpet here, I think took a big bounce. I don't know if they have the carpet down in Perth. Yeah, right. Shot by Puck, saved by Gephardt. Gephardt will unleash the long pass to Vanderpool. Now Vanderpool, transition. Look, he lost it. Trevor Buck got a pass. Buck looking for some help. Turn around, his pass goes awry, and it's... This could be saved. Yeah, it is saved, but ooh, they're going to call it offsides. Yeah. So it will go back to Syracuse. 4.17 remains in the second. Syracuse leads Hobart 8-2. to two. Gephardt has made six saves. Six out of eight. Turned in a great performance against Massachusetts, showing no signs of slowing down. Casey Powell now moving, spinning, behind the back, and scores! Oh, my! Well, if you thought Ryan's behind the back was nice, Casey said, learn something from Big Brother. That was phenomenal. Oh, my goodness. Casey Powell, a tremendous goal. He gets a nice pick, gets him a little breathing, and then he cuts in, cuts back. And then he goes behind the back. And of course, you know what that does, Rob? The goalie's waiting. OK, he's going to keep coming off. He cuts back. He's got to change hands. He doesn't expect the ball that quickly. So your reaction time is very, very slow compared to a guy who doesn't do it behind the back. So it's actually a pretty good, it's not a show off move. It actually works. And it's very effective. Well, I mean, not only that, but when it hits the lower left-hand corner of the pocket, yeah. I mean, when it just threads a needle, it's just that much more effective. I mean, he's not just doing it for pastry. He is uh, he's picking a spot behind the back. Well, at that point, Casey Powell passes Tim Nelson in the second place in career points at Syracuse with 272. As we have a timeout here with Syracuse leading Hobart 9-2. Boy, Casey Powell, another tremendous goal. What a moment. Is that spectacular or what? Syracuse and Hobart are known for getting up and down the field. They like to score a lot of points. And Coach Roy Simmons said before the game that he thought maybe 50 shots was something that Syracuse should be shooting for tonight. 
Uh, we're going to have to have 50 shots on him to challenge him. Uh, he's uh, well over 50% save, so if we could get 50 shots, uh, we could generate 18 or so goals. Uh, perhaps we have a chance of beating them. But we have to step up our shot selection. Well, just perhaps with 18 goals, we have a chance of beating them. Yeah. Well, that's what it took last year. Or close to it. As we take a look at the shots, and Syracuse well on their way with yeah. 3.51 remaining, and uh, they can get four more shots this period. They will be halfway to that 50, Roy Simmons was talking about. 7-0 run for Syracuse in the last 16 minutes. Coyote's midfield group in. Out up on top, Cordisco. I had noticed Syracuse had brought their attack out before, but they kind of run a little... Replacement, they put the midfield behind the attack up. Now they go back to regular position. Coyone taking his time. Here's Coyone now, taking the shot. Looking for a uh, control, got a stick up on him. He's looking for a call, doesn't get it. That's Jeff Cordisco and Chris Cordisco. And Chris back to Jeff. Those two, I believe they transferred from Western Maryland after a year. Didn't play lacrosse and came up to Syracuse. And seeing plenty of time here for the Orangemen. Doing the, uh, well, we had the Nelson brothers, the Gate brothers, the right. Powell brothers, the Cordisco brothers. Here's Kataya moving in. He has checked hard. Ball is loose. Kane fighting for it. So is Casey Powell. Now loose ball, and uh, it's going to roll out of bounds. We have a whistle. Stop and play, and it is going to go to Hobart. Steve Miller made the call. Roy Simmons doesn't look too happy about it, shaking that head with that white mane of hair. <laughs> so Hobart, boy, they really need some goals. One of the marvelous things about lacrosse is that uh, you get a goal and start winning some faceoffs, and you can turn around the game in a hurry, but Hobart has got to do something, and that is not it. No, Aaron not. pass and uh, goes back to Syracuse. I think a similar thing happened to Massachusetts. They started forcing, and then Sometimes the passes aren't there. You force them a little bit down seven goals, and they go out of bounds, and it just doesn't help at all. And now Syracuse is going to have a chance to clear. They're going to put a lot of pressure on that's clear. Cordisco gets it, though. Easy time for the Orange. Yeah, they just move it so quickly. Sheedy up to Cordisco, Chris Cordisco. Here's Ryan Powell looking, and Syracuse will reset offensively. Coyone comes back on the field now to join the attack. Chris Cordisco looking, and he uh, didn't want to wait. Got a quick shot off. And Tie there for backup for Syracuse at 151, with Syracuse leading 9 2. Hobart showing some zones on occasion, and they just had one in now on the inbounds play. Here's Ryan Powell to Casey. Casey looking. Goes back to Kataya, rather not, uh, not uh, Ryan Powell. His shot. They went off the side of the net. Kataya tracks it down again. Matt Kataya. Had a nice game on Sunday versus. UMass, and come tournament time, when teams are really trying to batten down the hatches on Casey, pal, uh, there's guys like Kataya and others oh. that come up, and now Kataya just moving in, faked out Kane, hit off the post. David Kane never knew what happened, and Kataya just waltzed in, had an easy opportunity he's ever going to see. Wonder if he was laughing underneath his mask. Well, you just see the end of it here. You don't see the move that he made. He just, he just absolutely fooled him. Here's Casey Powell looking in. in double team now. Loose ball. Casey still fighting for it. Cordisco moving in. He can't help out. Back come the statesman on the attack. This is Cottrell. Cottrell with a clearing pass. Now here comes Hobart. Unsettled situation. Quick pass. Down low. Oh my goodness. How did they not score there? And it goes back to Syracuse. Well, Jason Wale was on the doorstep with the ball. Looked like he didn't have control of it. And Sheedy got in his face, 25, I think, watch. He just got, just got a stick on him. He couldn't, couldn't get the shot the way he wanted. You see how it finished off? Sheedy got a stick on him. Not a real good check, but enough to make the ball go high. I guess if you prevent a goal, it's a real good check. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt about it. I mean, that was that was one where he was right there in front of Gephardt. Maybe uh, in that situation, he'll rush it in the future because he had just a second, and as he tried to fake Gephardt, the save was made. 
So now Syracuse, under 20 seconds remains in the second period. And Syracuse will call a timeout. 16 seconds remain in the second. Syracuse leads 9 to 2. And that's where we're going to pick up the action when we return with Syracuse Hobart Lacrosse on Super Sports right after this. Volano and uh, Austin Gardner are the, the two keys to, to stop Casey. Uh, and again, the problem there is that there's a lot of other weapons on Syracuse besides Casey. He's obviously the, 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 the marquee player, but there's an awful lot of talent there to stop. Now Casey Powell has two goals. Ryan Powell has two goals. Marshall Abrams has one. Devin Darkangelo has one. Matt Kataya has one. Matt Coyone has one. So yeah, there's some talent out there. Now Casey's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Seven seconds, six seconds. Casey Powell moving in. Tried to carry it all the way in, maybe tried to carry it a little too far. Still keeps it alive, but can't get one off. Yeah. Flag and uh, it's gonna we have to sort that out for the second half as Casey Powell trots off the field. He has helped lead the Syracuse Orangemen to a 9-2 lead over Hobart. There will be a face-off. And we will expect that when we return. Syracuse leads Hobart 9-2. More Hobart, Syracuse than Cross on Super Sports after this. Welcome back to the Carry It Home, where the Syracuse Orangemen lead the Hobart Statesmen by a score of 9-2. to two. And, Dale, we talked about how important goaltending was going to be before this game began, and B.J. O'Hare called it a big key to the game, and his guy has played pretty well. Paul Akoski has been. He's been challenged quite a bit, but uh, he's come up with some big saves. Started out early when Syracuse went after him, and he just, good reaction time, knocked a couple aside, and uh, the Statesmen were in it. Nice save here, tracks it the whole way, but doesn't save the rebound, but was able to really get a stick on most of them. Syracuse counters with uh, Abrams. Watch Abrams on this bounce pass here as he oh. hits Ryan Powell, who puts the backhand in. And then you're going to see another one as Casey goes behind his back. This has not been an ordinary game in terms of shots, but those are not fancy shots. Those are just good basic parts of their repertoire. Let's check the stats out. SU 24 shot to 17 for Hallmark. 6-5 in the save department. Ground ball, Syracuse up by 6, 24 to 18. Faceoffs 8 to 5 in favor of Syracuse. Clears 9 out of 9 for Syracuse. They're perfect. 8 out of 11 for Hobart. Man up goal, Syracuse able to put the only one in at 1 out of 3. Talk about a balanced attack. Well, look what Syracuse has rung up as far as scoring goals. They have just been, well, it's just all over the board. Look at that. Yeah, you've got a lot of guys up there. You've got a couple of defensive people, which really kind of gets into them. Powell, uh, of course, expected, but uh, Vanderpool did a good job. Uh, Safarelli, Coyone. And there's Vanderpool again with his goal, putting Syracuse up by a score of 10 to 2, just 13 seconds into the second half. Well, I, I had made a mistake when I said that there would be a face-off. There was not as the period ended on the penalty. Syracuse just got the ball, and Vanderpool picks right up where they left off, and he puts the net to move in as he took a nice sidearm shot on the man up. Syracuse now two man up goals. If we have a second, I'd like to take a look at that goal again because it looked like it bounced off the head of Polakowski. Maybe we can take a look at that a little later on. Syracuse leading Hobart 10 to 2, 14 47 remains. Alexander going for the loose ball. Hobart, boy, they need to pick up some of these loose balls they do here. Here's Nathan Roost being chased by Alexander. Roost looking for some place to go. Finally settles back down. So the Statesman down 10 to 2. They can strike, quick, strike quickly, but they're going to need to strike quickly here against Syracuse. Boy, of those nine goals in the first period, nine different players involved, whether they scored goals or assisted. That's amazing. That's called getting your people into the offense, isn't it? There's Roos going to work. Saved by Gephardt. He's checked from behind by Alexander, who gives him a little love shove when that was all said and done. Just enough to put him in the crease, just enough to stop the play. It's a good legal push. And he went in the crease before the ball did, and uh, Matt Alexander continues his tremendous defense. Tenacious job he has done. Now he's going on the old. And Syracuse continuing to be perfect on their clear attempts. We talked uh, earlier in the game about the matchups between the two teams. Some of the matchups we're going to be looking at, Austin Gardner versus Casey Powell. And again, Syracuse has gotten such great balanced scoring, and they did that against Massachusetts, too, that for teams to be able to just concentrate on Casey Powell, that's something that really hasn't worked for them. 
to talk about the matchup. Glatz has done a nice job on Roos, uh, really just denying him the ball and has done uh, really quite well for a fresh well, for anybody, but he is only a freshman, an experienced senior. Oh my! Matt Kataya shoots and scores. Syracuse leads 11 to 2. Syracuse has found their offensive groove. Vanderpool is going to get an assist on this. Nice pass to Kataya, and Kataya just not you, the angle there. Obviously, you could see on the replay, not much of an angle, but Kataya puts in number two for himself on a dandy shot and rings up number 11 for Syracuse. You can see the faceoffs even, but Hobart, since they're losing other departments, needs to find a way to win some of these faceoffs. Boy, they are. At the desperate stage right now, Jason Denneker knocked down, continuing to battle for it, still loose. Hobart finally picks it up, moving to the attack. Schwanke, Schwanke check, driven hard. Now a race for the ball, and it is going to go back Hobart, or go back Syracuse's way. Boy, Hobart just he can't get the ball in the offensive zone. Schwanke got checked by Rule, and Rule wouldn't get a stick back, and that was a, what, a 5-5 guy or a 5-8 guy against a 6-5 guy. Is low now. Low looking to clear and does. Carries in. Looking around. Picks a moment. Cuts back in. Here comes Low. Moving his shot. is save. Scoops it up. One hand and retains possession. What a great rebound. He gets a round of applause. There's Ryan Powell now. Boy, Austin Gardner coming way out to deny Casey Powell the ball. As we see Kataya checking back in. Low checks back out. Boy, you have to take those moments of glory where they come. Uh, quick shot, and you're out of the uh, right. out on the uh, defensive replacement, offensive replacement. Tim Burns one who's in there. Quick pass in front to Darkangelo. Darkangelo lost it. Vanderpool comes charging in, but he's going to be whistled. That's going to be a time served, I believe. I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah. Thought the ball. I don't know if the ball was. Yeah, he had it. Good call. By the way, just want to mention our official Steve Miller, Walt Munsey, Bruce Teague, and Joe Mars. I worked with most of those guys over a number of years ago, but uh, very competent officials have done a good job with this game, and they just called the first heavily on Syracuse in the second half, and Vanderpool is going to sit 4.30, Rob. And Hobart is 0 for 2 in the man-up situation. No time like the present for the statesman to try to convert. around behind their own net. Quick pass down low to Roost. Here's Nathan Roost looking. Sheedy takes a whack at him. Abrams takes a whack at him. Here's Beebe now trying to come in. Check from behind and hit up front. Stop and play and getting a little physical out there. You think? As uh, Jared Beebe taking some offense to the hits from Devin Ackerman. Well, he hung his stick right there. You see that stick? When you hang that stick out, that, that was the illegal check right there by Ackerman. No doubt about that. So he will sit. Yeah, it's going to be two-man advantage. Yeah. Well, we got four seconds left on uh, Vanderpool's. And uh, a minute, I'm assuming, on Ackerman. Well, I would think so. Yeah. I'm getting ready to dash onto the field. I That's off the road. He's going to be checking in. Statesman looking to go on the attack quickly. I know it's going to be uh, Alexander rushing in. And he gets back in time to make it a one-man up situation. Pass into the slot. Shot off the post again. Boy, Hobart has rung the post a couple of times. Here's BB looking. Shot oh. saved by Gephardt. Saw it all the way. Stuck with it. Good point. BB trying to go off the ground and in. Now we have uh, an offsides call on Syracuse. Casey Powell doesn't understand that call. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna. But Joe Mars is the uh, bench official. He may. Let's see what the call is. The call was offsides. I suspect that might get overruled. Yeah, it's gonna be overruled. Yeah. You know, that is a good thing about lacrosse. They uh, don't go out. If they see it, they'll rectify it. It's probably one of the hardest calls in lacrosse because you have to quickly look to make sure there's four guys on the defensive side and, and three on the offensive, and they cross that center line so often. It's a very difficult call. But Casey Powell slashed there and 
Kind of came up lame. He's being double teamed. Hobart has the extra man out there. Casey run into, but maintains possession of the ball with 15 seconds left in this Hobart penalty. 10.55 remains in the third. Syracuse leads 11 to two. This is like what Marcus Haynes used to do for the Globetrotters, just dribbling it around. Casey trying to kill it by himself, but evidently stepped out of bounds. Is that correct? Well, failure to advance was the call. Did not get it into the, in, past the restraining line, wow. so they called him for that. Long Ran looping pass, and now the statesman uh, back at even strength, and boy, just dropped out there by David Kane. Loose ball, still being scrambled for, and man, Hobart can't afford many mistakes like that. Quick pass, here comes Syracuse on the attack. Here's Kataya to Casey Powell. Oh my, Casey Powell, point blank range. His shot sails high and wide. He's a little upset with himself. He got a perfect underhand pass from Kutaya, and they go right back at it. Yeah, he only converts that about 95% of the time, so. If you take a look at the shots, uh, Roy Simmons talked about 50 being the key, 30 now for Syracuse to 19 for Hobart. Quick pass down to Kataya. Kataya looking, lost it. Kataya comes back with a strong hit. Now it looks like Hobart's going to have a chance to clear. Quick pass ahead, and they finally get into the attack zone again. See if they can get something going here. Swanky to Roost. Roost uh, shot attempt, he is just hammered in the crease. That was Mitchell rather than Roost. Yeah, I, well, Roost also, they got hammered by Rule. There's the there's the hit, watch watch this. Yeah, that's a, that's a big guy there with uh, Rule 6'5 or so. We talked earlier too, uh, you look at the ground balls, and uh, Syracuse the advantage there too, and a big heavy hit. Ball on the ground, and Rule comes away with it. Rule looking. Goes wide to Glisker, now to Sheedy, and back on the attack. And here comes Casey Powell. Oh, way up in front, wide open, they shoot, they score. Jeff Cordisco with a goal, beautiful setup from Casey Powell. Great job on the clear by Syracuse. A flawless clear attempt led to the fast break. Casey Powell to Jeff Cordisco. Rule started the whole thing, and he got the ball up, and then they pass it. Perfect passing over to Powell. He comes down the side, sees the cutter, gets it to Cordisco, and you're going to see the left-handed goal. But Jeff Rule is the guy who started the whole thing. You can see the, the finish of it right there. Nice, nice little shot. But I shouldn't say Jeff has Josh Rule. Just a great job. He's played a whale of a game. Here comes Hobart looking to go on the attack. Moving in. Oh, stripped away. As that was Schwenke on the attack, he had it taken away, and it is going to stay Hobart ball. Going back to something we saw earlier, that quick shot by Roost, where he was hammered in the slot area, so to speak. And we saw earlier where Roost was on the doorstep for Gephardt, made a couple fakes, and then the late check came, and he never really got a good shot off. And Roost seemed intent to get that shot off quickly. He's not being afforded a lot of room by the Syracuse defense. No, he's not. You're absolutely right. He's not given a lot of time. They're doing great coverage. The defensive middies a great job, and then they close quickly. And then they got Gebhardt, who's having a good day when they get through. But it's hard to get through all those bodies when they play good body position, and that's what they have been doing defensively. That was Trevor Buck from about 40 feet. That's a, the first clean look Hobart's had in a while from 40 feet away. And you're really taking your chances. Here's Schwenke now on the attack. Schwenke moving in. His shot saved by Gebhardt. Quick outlet pass. Oh, bobbled. Picked up now. This is uh, Tim Glisker, I believe. Yep, Glisker on the attack. Glisker moving in. His pass intercepted. Hart looking for somebody to get it out of his uh, Bernie Cottrell stick. And finally, they do get it up to David Kane. Another long stick moving in on the attack. And he's being guarded by John Matthews. And he will trot off the field. And Hobart makes their situational substitutions. That's Eric Petranchuk, and Petranchuk will simply wait for his attackers to come out on the field. Now they do. Now Petranchuk on the right-hand part of your screen, carrying the ball. Flips all the way out to Alex Mitchell. Now Mitchell will start the attack for Hobart. They trail 12-2, 7.50 remains in the third period. They need, obviously, some sort of flurry here. Moving in, not much. Boy, hit it off a... Couldn't tell if it was yeah. the back of Roost or the back of one of the 
Syracuse defenders, but boy. You said it before, it never made it to the goalie, Rob. They've just done a great job of getting the body position, and that's what happens when you're a defenseman or a midi. You get the ball bounced off you, but as long as it doesn't go into the goal, that's what you're doing, and they have played. Marshall Abrams right there, he's, you see him right there, has played great defense, and they've been taking the ball away, not just knocking the players out, they've been taking the ball away, like right there. Beautiful job of anticipating the passing lane by John Glatzel, but back to Hobart. Get a look at that. Uh, look at Glatzel jump to play. Yeah. Just saw it coming. Great anticipation. And Hobart Petranchik again. Being guarded by Lowe. Petranchik moving in. Quick shot. Goes just wide. Race for the ball. See where the and, call is. Yeah, it's going to go back to Syracuse. Josh Rule, we mentioned it before. Boy, for a big guy, he can motor, and he got there first. He was racing Chuck Wilbur from Cicero. Get Wilbur to it. We have a stop and play rule. Oh, Gephardt way out being checked. Flips it ahead calmly to Rule. Rule long pass ahead. Syracuse has got it out of the zone. And ready to go on to the attack as that was Matthews to Kataya. Now here's Ryan Powell. Ryan Powell will set the offense. Lisa Powell is out there as well as Stuart Smith. Pass in the slot. Matthews all tied up. Smith looks for it, but the statesman trying to clear it. And a long run, Matthews chasing. We're going to get a push there, I think. Big shot. On the line. Let's see. Giving Ben Siemens a shot. And he did it well. He did it perfectly because it was a legal push, Rob, and he got him on the line. Nice call. Watch the push on the side, and he goes out of bounds, and Syracuse will get the ball back. So Matthews, a nice job. Siemens trying to get rid of it, but uh, couldn't do it in time. Syracuse now moves on to the attack, and they shoot, and they score. Matt Kataya, third goal of the game. Boy, oh boy. Malakowski talking to his defenders. This must be a frustrating day for him and, uh, and for the Hobart statesman. Well, nobody, you know, you, you gave Kataya a lot of room. They're just, uh, Hobart's now in a lot of trouble in terms of uh, the rest of this game. It's 6-10 left in the third quarter, and Syracuse just having their way there, and Kataya, a little salute at the end. Well, you can talk about Casey Powell and Ryan Powell, and we talked about this last game a little bit, too. You just wonder if maybe in giving up a couple of games, giving up uh, to Loyola, obviously a good win for the Greyhounds, and they are one of the finest teams in the country, and then the loss at Rutgers. You wonder, though, if maybe Syracuse needed that. They needed to find a way to score without Casey Powell at his best, or when teams say, all right, we're going to take away Casey Powell well, to the best of our ability and, and see if the other guys can score, because it seems like Syracuse is so in sync offensively. I mean, Casey Powell clearly the standout, but other players for Syracuse are really performing well offensively. Well, that's a good point, and I, I think that, that may be. I don't know what Syracuse coaches would say. There's going to be a penalty here, but... They have really come from that loss and done a great job. Ball is going to be down at, I think we're going to get a, a hold or a slash. Well, it would have been, I mean, if Casey Powell were, sa were sailing along in that fashion coming to the NCAA tournament, uh, and then they found, then the NCAA tournament team found a way to shut those guys down. And then if you didn't have guys like, for instance, Matt Katai, who has three goals today, stepping forward, then maybe Syracuse would be in trouble. And Coach Roy Simmons talked about the importance and the improved play of Matt Katai. He hardly left the field. He took his rest or his break by playing close attack and did some damage back there as a result. So, uh, it's not that we, we're not deep in that position, we're inexperienced in that position. So Matt on the field as a junior is very important. And as we can see, Hobart frustrated on the offensive end as well. As much as we're talking about Hobart or Syracuse offensively, and you, you see Matt Kataya, who Roy Simmons was talking about, and Syracuse has been impressive. They were impressive, especially in the first half against Massachusetts. Their defense has been spectacular. I agree 100%, and I think in the Massachusetts game, that impressed me more than the offense. And today they have continued to do defensive dominance because I said not only are they playing good defense, they are causing turnovers and taking the ball away. They're going to be off sides. Yes, they are. <laughs> that wasn't even close. Well, Blisker wasn't sure what he wanted to do with that ball. It was 
Casey Powell was looking for some help, but he just kind of got deserted. Well, they got a big stick in Ackerman's in 26. Uh, they set up and play a little defense, not just after we talked about how well they played. Let's see if they can. Yeah, they just had a little trouble picking up. Now they're all got numbers. This is Schwanke moving in. Another save by Gephardt. Nathan Roos comes down with it. Matthews trying to check him. Roos with a quick little pass. Boy, Syracuse reacts offensively. Another pass. Shot goes wide, and it's going to go back to Syracuse. Good Alex hustle. Mitchell's shot goes wide there. Glatzel has done a great job. It was the matchup we talked about. And quietly done a very effective job. Here's Vanderpool now carrying in. Ira Vanderpool moving on to the attack. Gets in deep. His shot goes high and wide. Casey Powell there to track it down. Powell taking a look on Gardner. Boy, every Hobart defender has his <laughs> One eye on their man, another eye on Casey Powell. Looking to double or triple and slide. Here's Burns now. Casey comes out to ask him how he's doing. Hey, Burns pass. Finally corralled over there in the corner. By Devin Garcangelo. Here's Casey Powell. Casey looking to go to work. Let's see much. Stops back the other way. Boy, just dragged down by a bevy of statesman defenders. Look how many orange shirts get off him. At least three, maybe four. And they retain possession. Syracuse does his run and pop. Looking to move in. Now looking, looking, looking for a cutter. Had Vanderpool. Opts to go back around to Casey Powell. Tim Burns. Burns back to Casey Powell. 315 and counting. Syracuse oh, leads 14 to 12. Oh, oh, good hit out. Casey Powell. That really drove his head back. There's Casey now darting in. Jumps up in the air. Save in the crease. Polakowski, they're going to call him in the crease. Yeah. This is like, what is the deal? Are they allowed to hit me in the head like that? Yeah, right. He does take a lot of punishment. You know, you, you probably get a, a lot of money if you got a nickel for every bruise he has in his body. Polakowski, nice job. Stayed up stick to stick. The big guy went up and caused it to go back, but now it's Syracuse on the run. Kataya to Ryan Powell. Powell back to Kataya. Oh, well, that was a great job by Polakowski stoning uh, Powell on the doorstep. Here's Casey now to Ryan. Ryan shoots and scores. Oh, relentless pressure by Syracuse. You see Matt Alexander giving Ryan a big hug. Everyone comes over to congratulate Casey. The crowd on their feet. They're enjoying themselves as well. Ryan Powell makes it 14 to two with 2.46 remaining in the third. Just a nice look away pass. You know, I wonder if they take a little different tack here. Polakowski got up after that. He could have been miffed because they just, you know, nobody's getting a stick up here, guys. I can only go left, right, left, right so many times. And when he got up off the ground, he patted all his defensemen on the back and said, nice try. So, you know what, Polakowski, it's a classy thing to do. It's uh, it's tough to let those guys uh, put those goals in on you and, and not try to blame somebody else. So, a lot of credit to Polakowski. Yeah, here's Schwenke now with the ball. Boy, it's hard not to... Uh Hard not to do comparative shopping at this time of year when we're talking about the NCAA tournament. Duke and Syracuse tied in the recent poll for sixth. Duke beat Hobart 19 to six, but that was a close game down at Duke, seven to five until late in the third. Hobart had a couple of chances to score there, and then Duke uh, just got a couple goals quickly before the end of the third, and then and then romped the rest of the way. As you take a look at the clears, and boy, there's been a big part of the story: the pressure Syracuse has put on. And, Meanwhile, they have been flawless in their clear attempts. So There's another one. Heart in my throat as I said that with a long skin pass ahead to John Matthews. Now, on the other hand, Syracuse has just been dominant from the opening whistle in this game. And you wonder how much that's going to be important if it comes down. Uh, you know, some of the teams, like Hopkins, still has to play a little. Maybe one of those teams would slide out of the top four. Virginia's in the top four, but, but they're only seven and four. So, yeah, you wonder if maybe Syracuse does have a chance if, with this dominating performance and if they can do the same to Georgetown to get a first round by. And this is, as Coach Simmons says, you just got to keep playing your best game every day and, and, and hope that you've got quality opponents left, which he does. Uh, especially with the Georgetown coming up after this Hobart game. So they've got their, uh, all they can do is what they can do. And uh, you got some guys sitting around Baltimore and uh, deciding whether you're going to make it, I guess. Uh, 
At any rate, uh, Syracuse certainly has a history also, which I would assume would fit into that somewhere. And they've got the best player in the country right there, right. Casey Powell. Kind of helps. Here's Ryan Powell now moving in. Ryan looking. Thwarted there, double team. Nice check. It's a whack, but a big check there. Polakowski now corrals. Long pass ahead. Hobart will clear the zone. Move into the attack offensively. Zarek Siemens, or Ben Siemens rather. Boy, Syracuse just relentless with their pressure. This is Jeremy Mahoney carrying in. I don't think Mahoney's a the guy they look to score a lot of goals with, certainly. And uh, boy, they just, uh, Hobart, we call him out of sync offensively or just credit Syracuse? No, you know, I, you've got to give Sheedy credit on that. I mean, that's what I've been talking about. Syracuse is not just playing good defense. They are just getting the ball back and, and putting the pressure on it. That was a Sheedy right there. Caused that ball to come back to Syracuse. So that offensive series right now is courtesy of Sheedy. Another flawless clear effort by the Orangemen. 35 seconds remain in the third period. Syracuse leads 14 to 2. Matt Kataya with the ball. Working it around the perimeter. Here's Coyote. Jeff Cordisco is also out there. Kataya check the loose ball. Still up in the air. Bang around the crease. Whistle blows. <laughs> Boy, that's. In the crease with the ball on the ground is a tough place to be. And we're going to have a penalty against, I believe, Chris Cordisco. I don't know if they had one against Orange, too. I'll have to see. Uh, sure, uh, it's Chris Cordisco with an illegal check. That's nice to see. Check him in the back. Kutaya, last three games, we, we had talked about him before. Seven goals and three assists, uh, and he is just, as, as Coach Simmons said, not only that, they, they give him a rest by going down, let him play attack. He uh, just plays great defense because, you know, the ball goes down. Now you're a defensive midfielder, you know? So uh, he has just played tremendously for Syracuse, and that's the kind of lift I think they really needed. Yeah, Kutaya now with stepping up his goal score this year. He's had a very good year. Hobart calling a timeout. We're talking about Casey and Ryan Powell. End of the quarter. Oh, end of the quarter, yeah. I beg your pardon. Casey and Ryan Powell and Kataya. Three-pronged attack is making Syracuse tough down the stretch. Syracuse leads the Hobart Statesman 14-2 after three periods of play. Back with more Syracuse across on Super Sports after this. The thing that struck me is their defense is really uh, evolving. They played awfully good defense against a pretty good offensive team. Made it real difficult for them to get shots. Um, they were sliding well. I thought, I thought Greg Gephardt had a real solid game. And uh, that, that's a little uh, you know, disconcerting because that seemed to be the area that people thought maybe was a chink in their armor, and I, I think they've, they've shored that up. You can see Wale take that uh, shot, knock way up in the air, but as we said, they have not had many good shots at the goal because of the defense, especially the mini defense. They have been able to get sticks on people. Uh, Glatzel's done a great job on, on Roos, the, the, the thing we talked about at the beginning of the, of the show. And, uh, and let's look, take a look at Gebhardt. The last two games, 23 saves, uh, oh. giving up two and a half goals against. He's just had a super last series. And they said, you know what, a lot of practice. He's out here early. He practices a lot in practice. So uh, he's making himself a better goalie. Syracuse leads 14-2 as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Syracuse uh, man down right now, so Hobart trying to get on the board. Something they haven't done, something they have not done since the first period. Shot goes high and wide. As you can see there, uh, Jason Wale was running after that play. You know, I was looking at Gebhardt there. He had that track the whole way. That's the area he had some problems with earlier in the season. Shots out a little further than when you normally take them. He had that one track. Wale to Dresden, back to Dresden. Dresden quick shot in and a snap shot. Alex Mitchell can't convert. He's frustrated. But boy, it's not like they're turning around and getting any great looks at Gephardt either. No, you're absolutely right. They are not. And that's probably one of the reasons why they are frustrated. Firing blind. Is Jared Beattie quick snap pass. Shot goes way oh, high. In fact, uh, hit, the, hit the defensive shot. Sheedy. Yeah, Sheedy. Here's Marshall Abrams now looking to clear. He'd be doing a good job of getting in there. Kataya now oh, rolling oh, around oh. on the ground with it. He's smashed down. Still has it. Up to Abrams. Abrams looking to 
come in with a long step. Yes. He shoots and scores. Marshall Abrams. Oh, what an effort by Kataya. What a goal by Abrams. Boy, Marshall Abrams, fantastic. What a tremendous play. Two goals and an assist from Abrams today. Benacci going down and looking for some help. Kutaya been on the ground, gets up, gets knocked down again, says, where's Marshall? I'll just make a little scooch pass over to him. And then Marshall says, I'm going to make a move and up and down with a six-foot stick. Absolutely amazing. And Kataya following the Marshall plan there. And Abrams, <laughs> two goals and an assist. Oh, a beauty there. 15 to 2 now at the 14 minute mark. Syracuse comes back looking for more. Here's Jeff Lowe. Quick snap pass. Ooh, too much for Deneker. How about Deneker out there with a long stick in the faceoff? Oh, that's a, oh that, well, that was Joe Seglia. Yep, Seglia. Yeah, no wonder I was so surprised. Right, yeah. <laughs> Although we have seen people go out and face off with that long stick, but uh, that was Seglia. Yeah, how about the kid from Loyola? Yeah. Whew. Unbelievable. Polakowski now. And, oh, my. Ryan Powell comes running aggressively for the... <laughs> and then asking the crowd, please applaud my efforts. Well, he's an emotional guy, and he... Uh, he, he, he was really psyched and pumped for this game, and you could tell when we were down on the field beforehand. Well, Ryan and Casey Powell are so aggressive. Not only are they greatly skilled, but I mean, they are just aggressive terrors out there. Frankly, they frighten me. <laughs> but their bolts aren't all tight. <laughs> Here's Coyote now to Jeff Corbisco. I bet they'd be delighted to hear that. <laughs> I don't know about their folks. Yeah. <laughs> I think they know it's a, it's a compliment. That's right. Jeff now and Chris Cordisco working it around the perimeter. Ryan Powell. So we have two sets of brothers out there. Casey Powell. Kayoni and Kataya out there as well. And Ryan looking around, looking around. Ooh, this pass a little too high. Here's Kataya now giving chase. He'll come up with it. Oop, lost it again and stepped out of bounds and it looks like it's going to be go back to Hobart, I believe. And it's going to go back to Hobart. 12.58. Hobart has not scored in 35 minutes. That is remarkable. And Massachusetts had a similar stretch. It was the first 35 right, minutes yes. or so of that game. Yeah, it took them it was only halfway through the third period before they got anything. Now you're talking about two ranked teams in better than seven quarters of play. Scoring five goals. That is just remarkable. Syracuse taking great pride in their defense. And Roy Simmons suspected that the defense was going to be the team's strength this year. And it maybe took a little while to materialize, but it has really been the team's strength right now. Pass attempt from Nathan Roost and Candy well, save. I mean, Syracuse is just moving so quickly. It seems like every person that touches it, it seems like there's 10 Syracuse defenders out there, you know? Here's Roos now. Roos has some room. Look the oh, oh, saved by Jason Gephardt. Well, Roos finally got a good look. Looked around to make sure he had a good look. Had plenty of time. He did, and Gephardt was equal to the task. Ryan Powell faking behind the back and scores. Ryan Powell. Oh, my goodness. A tremendous save by Gephardt on the one end. Ryan Powell, a spectacular goal on the other end. Oh, and you know, you wonder why people love lacrosse, right? Watch this. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He's got nobody there. And Gephardt just drops it the right second, pops it out to rule, and they start it the other way. Watch it coming down the other way. He takes him right. He got Polakowski going one way, and he puts it just behind his stick. Great job. Nice job, guys, on the camera. Super job. There's the shot right there. There's the reaction. Polakowski moving to his left, and the ball went back to the right. Ugh, a four-goal effort from Ryan Powell. Ooh, well, Casey owes him a behind the back. Yeah, well, he's, he's, because earlier we had one from Ryan, and then Casey decided that uh, he better show little brother what was up. Well, I'll tell you, it's 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 tough to really get that that much oomph on those shots, but they managed to. Well, take a look at the, the poll we've mentioned. Rob's been talking about it. Let's take a look at it. Maryland 
and Princeton, I think, are locks yeah. to, be, to get buys. Now, Hopkins and Loyola play each other this weekend. So the loser of that game might slip out of the top four. Now, Virginia stands between both Duke and Syracuse in that top four, but Virginia's seven and four. They don't have any games left. Their fate is in some ways out of their own hands. Now, you look at Duke and Syracuse, and Syracuse was behind Duke after last week. I would think maybe with this dominating performance, they have a chance to move up. You look at Jason Gephardt with 12 saves, and then the team trailing Syracuse in the polls, Georgetown, the team immediately behind them, comes into town this weekend. So. You have to think if Syracuse can beat Georgetown, they've got maybe a 50-50 chance of, of getting one of those top four seeds. Good point. And, and if, if worse comes to worse, they don't get a bye. But uh, that's not the end of the world either. But, of course, uh, they would like to get a bye and get the people rested. 16-2, Syracuse leads 11-45 remaining. They win another faceoff on the attack. Kataya shoots and scores. Matt Kataya, his fourth goal of the game. Syracuse just pouring it on. And relentless comes to mind. Off the face off. Nice check. Gets the ball up. Makes the one hand pass. That was a nice pass by Cersei, 46. A good dump. And then Kutaya, the finisher. And that's it for. As Kataya, you see his fourth goal. That's a night for Jason Gephardt coming over, getting a big hug and congratulations from his teammates. Another spectacular outing. Two straight incredible performances by Jason Gephardt. I mean, all-American performances. Absolutely. And a little footnote to that. It lets you get Mulligan in. Now, as you go into the into the NCAA tournament, you know, you're an injury away from having this guy come in and be your stopper. So let's not let him rust away if we get a chance to get him in. So by getting this game up to that point, 11-29, Mulligan's going to get some playing time. And having Mulligan in there doesn't exactly put you in a stew either because his save percentage of 67% is uh, very high. You like that Mulligan stick? I was going to say it. You didn't really like that, did you? <laughs> Actually, I guess it was uh, it was apropos. 17 to 2, Syracuse leads. 11:05 and counting remaining in the fourth. This is Casey Powell with the ball. Boy, Anna Anna Dawson. Dawson. Gardner's been dogging yeah. them all game. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. Here's Kataya now looking. Kataya looking for number five. Soliday sneaking in, but they didn't see him. Here's Ryan Pally. Also has four goals. Ryan looking, waiting. Goes to Casey, coming off his pick. Casey moving in, quick pass to Kataya, and there is number five from Kataya. Beautiful feed by Casey Powell. 19 to two, 18 to two rather, Syracuse leads. Now you might ask, who is this Matt Kataya guy? He's a junior, 6'1", 210, on a homer right down Route 81, and he quick sticks that by Polakowski. He's always been a fine player, a little slow. This year getting his offense going, but he has uh, got it pumping today. Fifth goal for Matt Kataya. Boy, B.J. O'Hara must just be discouraged. Four goals, four shots for Syracuse. They just continue to do what they've done all game long. I think everybody expected this to be a much, much closer game. And Syracuse is just dominant. You wonder how much that fourth quarter collapse against Duke maybe took out of the statesman's uh, sales. Well, you're, you're right. You know, your attitude. And then you might have it back for a while, but then when things start to happen, so then you say, oh, here we go again. And it's kind of like a, a little domino effect. And uh, that's, I think, what happened to BJ's team. They are a good team, but uh, they are facing an excellent team in Syracuse tonight. Having been in enough teams that have struggled in my time <laughs> that, that is that that becomes a factor and it's tough for a coach like B.J. O'Hare to do anything about that you almost wonder if you, uh, what can go wrong next whereas when you're used to winning close games as Syracuse its quick shot was wide of Mulligan Hobart will retain possession when you're a team like Syracuse that has the great tradition and I'm not saying obviously Hobart doesn't at the division three level they are the greatest program of all time but Roy Simmons' team just seems to win overtime games every year. They just find a way they expect to win. And it becomes a tradition. Yeah, you can't teach that, and you, you look for good things to happen. You expect good things to happen. Loose ball now as the statesman trying to go on the attack. They are putting a, they're putting a wall up there in front of the Mulligan, trying to screen him here, and they're, they're running some 1-4-1 one, one and cutting right in front. Now they reset the offense, take it back out and spread it out a bit. Long walk to the pass out to Alex Mitchell. Mitchell going to work. Quick pass, and it eludes Nathan Roost. 
rather, uh, Eric Burns. That's Eric Burns from West Jenny High School. He's a freshman, and uh, B.J. Harris says he expects big things from Eric Burns. He's uh, paying his dues this year in learning, but he thinks he's going to be a very fine player for the states. Well, coming in, Roost had 35 points, 26 goals, 9 assists. He has been held to nothing tonight. Boy, Syracuse, their perfect clear record almost blemished here. Quick pass attempt, Ryan Powell turns, whirls. Knocked down in front by a slew of Hobart Statesman defenders. Pawlikowski has it. He lost it right out of his stick. He's checked hard now outside of his crease. Kataya picks it up. He spins away from the hit. And Syracuse resets offensively. 9-15 remaining in the game. They lead 18-2. Now there's a stat you won't see the ground ball. You see team ground balls. But uh, Kutaya's had a number of them. And he did against Massachusetts. And they are key ground balls. Keeps the offense down. Still shooting at the goal. Kataya now being checked. Flip pass out. Stop and play. And we are going Hobart's way with the ball. A little bit of a pick again. Stuart Smith running off. Uh, Smith, his first goal against Massachusetts on Sunday. One I'm sure he'll never forget and always cherish. David Leggett now in the game for Hobart. Leggett looking for some room as we're starting to get a little deeper into each team's bench with the outcome of this game no longer in doubt. 8.35 remains in the fourth. Now, I will say, you know, coming and getting beat like this, obviously not what BJ wanted to do, but he gets a lot of exposure. They recruit kids now. They're a Division I program, and he said, you know, for a while, kids still had that stigma of Division III, but so even a loss here, people, oh, and they're going to get a goal out of that. Trevor Buck. That well, hard-working goal as he just ran around Tim Glisker. Glisker chased him for about 60 yards all the way around the goal. Some of the statesmen faithful, something to cheer about. Buck out of San Rafael, California, not a normal hot battle across that quickly. He's, it's kind of deceiving. We always show these replays. Watch it here. It looks like, geez, it's really, the guy should have been able to see it. But, of course, you got to remember, this is slow motion, and it goes so quickly. Uh, it's just very, very difficult. And Buck got his sixth goal of the season in the third for Hobart, but they have not scored in a long, long time. They have not scored since the first period. And a Nathan Roos goal made it 4-2. to Since then, Syracuse has scored 14 unanswered goals. John Ancelone now looking to move on the attack. Ancelone is being mugged out there. Good job by Hobart. Statesman, chance to clear here, and they do. It is Alex Mitchell. Mitchell gets it back now. Check from behind. And that is going to go back to Syracuse as Mulligan alertly hustled out of his crease to be the first one there. 7.49 remains for B.J. O'Hara. That can't come quickly enough, I suspect. This team trails Syracuse 18-3. We have a stop and play, and it's going to go back to Hobart. I must admit, I did not see the call. I just saw that it's going Hobart's way. And Roy Simmons perhaps pondering the same thing. With a whistle. Stop and play. Rashidi. Slash. So Rashidi will take a seat. There's the slash. Brian Bayer. Got a corner in New York. 58160 is the man who was the of that slash. So Rashidi will sit. To, let's see. Hey, there's, there's no Hobart does not have a man up goal. I'm oh, sure they'll I, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that is correct. Mulligan gathering his forces and setting the defense here as Hobart gets the man up for a minute. So Syracuse will collapse back into his zone. 7.33 and counting. Hobart a minute with a man up and a chance to get a goal here. It's uh, confidence time. A chance to feel a little bit better about yourself as you leave the carrier down here. Quick shot knocked down in front. Zaffirelli's got it. His pass uh, forward does not clear the zone as uh, Devin Ackerman couldn't control. And Hobart calls a timeout. 32 seconds left in the minute. 709 remains in the fourth quarter of this game. Syracuse leading by a score of 18 to 3. Now you talk about national championships, and Roy Simmons has won six of those. If you talk about the Krause Simmons Trophy, he's won 11 of those. And he talked about the importance of that and the regional rivalry between Syracuse and Hobart.
Almost definitely. This has uh, more emotional meaning. Some of the uh, emotion of the national trophies been diluted for me, and this one hasn't been, nor will it be. Uh, this goes personally deep to the family. It's the tradition of Hobart. I have the utmost respect for the Krauss family and the Hobart Syracuse tradition. It is a great tradition. Roy Simmons is a great coach. Boy, it must be nice to be uh, have the feeling of a national championship diluted. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, not that's, bad. yeah that's good, but... <laughs> Let's and check out uh, the you take a look at the balance scoring. Nine different players here on the screen who have scored goals for the Orangemen. As we said, a couple of uh, a couple defensemen, uh, Kutai up to five, outscoring the uh, brothers Powell and uh, Abrams two with one assist. And he's a, a defenseman, and both of his goals have been spectacular. 18 to three, 705 remaining. Hobart with a man up for the next 25 seconds or so. It's be nice too to play on a team with a superstar like Casey Powell. Quick shot to score, Jared Beebe. So the local product from West Genesee High School gets a goal in front of the home folks. 18 to four now. I was saying about Casey Powell, it must be nice to play with a guy who's that unselfish as uh, we take a look at Beebe's quarter ripper. Nice shot over the shoulder of Mulligan. You know, I mean, it, it, it would be very easy for Casey Powell to take a lot more shots, to not be so unselfish, and I don't think anybody really say much about it. But right. it's, it's nice to know that he can give it up, and it's for the good of the team, certainly, but like I said, he probably has more license to do things other than what he does. This always gets a little rough now here when you get the, the other guys coming in here trying to make a name for themselves. Nice one-hand pass again by Insula, 45. Well, you may have seen the last of uh, Casey and Ryan Powell. Anstey Jameson is now with the ball among those checking in for the first time today. This is Jason Janiskevich. Whoop. Janiskevich's uh, pass goes high and wide. Shots off the field. Syracuse just uh, trying to get everybody some playing time. Sure. Mulligan's uh, got a couple of goals scored on him, but uh, as I said, it's got to get that uh, got to get that experience. He is the heir apparent, redshirt freshman out of Farmingdale, New York, five up, one eighty-five. And he might not be seeing me. Same caliber of defense that. Uh, yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, things are a little different at this point in the game with an 18 to 4 lead. Hobart just getting a lot of people in now, too, as they make a change at the midfield. And they're working on the attack. Nice check there by Glisker, and Mulligan comes up with it. Now Sarah is looking to break out of the zone. Ooh, boy, get out of his way. There's Glisker moving in, Wines fires, nice save as Hobart has also changed goaltenders. That is uh, Greg Prostner with a save. That was an impressive save for a guy who just, you know, came in a game and uh, uh, Prostner, a 5'10", 175-pounder out of uh, Maryland, and he's got 15 saves, 10 goal against average. But here's the Glisker, takes a nice shot at him and he tracked that very well and then gets the rebound. So. A good job for the backup goalie from Hobart. And 5.34 remains in the game. Syracuse leads 18 to four. After scoring 14 in a row, Hobart has come back with two straight. Prosner looking. Tried to pass it around and uh-oh. Uh, in and out of the box there, I believe. Is that, uh, that's what it looked like. In and out of the zone, Syracuse. It's in and out of the zone and uh, Syracuse gets the ball back. Mass substitutions for both teams, and we will try to help you through that. Pat Kennedy among those out there for Syracuse. Janiskevich, who we talked about earlier. Also, Ansley Jamison is out there. And that is, uh, I believe, getting some work on attack. Matt Alexander. Oh, having trouble with that uh, number. That's John Lazaro actually out there. Here's Lazaro now with the ball, moving it behind the net to Joe Russell, and too far for Russell. Eludes him, and Hobart will have the ball. Good pass to Prosner, and Prosner will try to clear the zone. Long looping pass, and Hobart's able to do that. 
and they move on the attack. Still Trevor got, Morrison's got it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to say they still got uh, Rule in there and Sheedy. Uh, they've changed a couple defensemen. They have taken uh, Platzel out. Trevor Morrison is from Fayetteville. This is Spencer Niebuhr. Niebuhr looking. Being harassed defensively there by Harvey Sacker. Sacker's had some injury troubles this year. You're right, yeah. He's uh, been working him back in, but he did have some leg problems, I believe. Big collision, <laughs> big hit. Uh, well, a little chest-to-chest -chest bumping going on, a little scrumming. Well, these guys have been chomping at the bit all game, waiting for an opportunity to get in. The Glisker on this one looks like a linebacker that he is. Watch. Oh, 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 here comes Glisker. Get down there. Stay down. <laughs> and Hobart uh, back to action now, con controlling the ball. Four-minute mark. Syracuse leads 18-4. This is Trevor Morrison from Fayetteville. Pass skipping over into the corner. Knocked around there. Tom DeMary trying to come up with it for Hobart. Still loose. Still loose. And now Syracuse scoops it up and they move on to the attack. Carrying all the way in. Is that Sheedy? Yeah. Sheedy's still in the game. Ooh, strong check. Still retaining possession, though, is Lazaro. Lazaro skips behind his own net to Pat Kennedy. Kennedy, one of the freshmen for Syracuse. He's got a goal this year. Get your buddy in now, number 20. Oh, that's John Matthews. <laughs> I don't think I've made that mistake nope. yet this game. You've been perfect. Does that absolve me from having to hear about the next game? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Let's see if I can get through the next Three minutes even in this game without uh, confusing those two again. 2.58 now. Syracuse leading 18 to 4. As we take a good long look at Brian Soliday, freshman from Beth Page, New York. Pat Kennedy in with the ball right now, 42, so they really make it a little behind the back. Look. Kennedy trying to get a little razzle dazzle to incite the crowd at uh, the Carrier Dome. Most of the folks remaining around. Want to see the presentation of the trophy at the end of the game. Lots of sticks going out there. Somebody's going to call something here pretty soon. Now, obviously, Roy Simmons Sr. is one of the great names in all of the cross. Roy Simmons Jr. carrying on the great tradition at Syracuse. B.J. O'Hara, the Hobart coach, talked about the first time he had a chance to meet the legendary, the original Roy Simmons Sr. At this lacrosse camp were, I mean, half of the lacrosse Hall of Fame you know, the in the lacrosse hall of fame were there. Among them, uh, Roy Simmons. And he's just a, a really, really charismatic and uh, engaging gentleman. Um, when he spoke, I still remember all the, all the youngsters just hung on every word. And uh, of course, I grew up watching Syracuse lacrosse. You know, I had grown up in Camilla. So um, he's just a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, ambassador of the game, and a, a sportsman, a competitor, and a real gentleman. Roy Simmons Sr. and a lot of those traits and characteristics carried on to his son, Roy Simmons Jr., B.J. O'Hara talking about meeting the legendary Roy Simmons Sr. And B.J. O'Hara also a, a real nice guy, not uh, never pretentious, always has time to talk to you. He's uh, just an awful nice fella, and you feel bad for him tonight. Oh, you sure do. Fine player, too. Oh, absolutely. West uh, Genesee yep. High School. Here's John Matthews looking in. Pass down low, corralled there by Prosner. 155 remains. Prosner trying to clear. Ooh, nice pass. Quickly, Hobart gets it in and moves on the attack. Kind of a willy nilly pace back and forth here as Syracuse retains possession again, but we have a stop and play, and it will go back to Hobart. It was just as Tom Nee was getting a head of steam going on. Now, we talked about the the great tradition at Syracuse and uh, Roy Simmons Sr. Roy Simmons Jr. talked about meeting the other fellow we talked about at the beginning of the game, the other guy whose name's on that trophy, Babe Krause, when he was a youngster. Well, I'm quite a competitor. He played at Hobart, he played against my dad, and uh, just a wonderful man, a wonderful human being. Um, 
I literally can remember him, you know, when he comes to Syracuse, he comes to the house. Those kind of traditions that don't seem to be prevalent now, but uh, I remember the kids sitting in his lap and then bouncing me on his knee. And I remember playing against him and how competitive he was. Roy Simmons Jr. talking about Babe Kraus. The Kraus Simmons Trophy named after Babe Kraus and Roy Simmons Sr. goes to the winner of this great rivalry, winner of this great game every year. And Syracuse is well on their way as we get a quick goal there by Trevor Buck. That is Buck's second goal of the game. And it is his second goal here of the fourth and final period. Taking another look at this. Buck. And it brings the Hobart fans to their feet, and they're still here cheering. And Buck, as you said, came up with a second. The guy out of uh, San Rafael, California, second goal. And with 101 left, uh, Syracuse up by 13. Game not in doubt for quite a while. I was a student at uh, Hobart in 1986 when the first game was played for the Krause Simmons Trophy, and that game uh, Hobart won. Yeah. I believe I did that game on television. That was a shocker. Hobart was number one in Division Three in the country. Syracuse number one in Division One. Uh, Hobart had lost earlier that year to Hopkins, 11 to seven, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, Syracuse took the trip down to Geneva, and uh, Hobart beat them. And that's the only time they've beaten them since the Kraus Simmons Trophy has uh, has been fought for. Take a look and at the call here. It used to be fun to go down there too. It was always kind of a uh, kind of a sideshow down at uh, Geneva when, <laughs> when Syracuse played. Yes, that uh, those sideshows uh, at Geneva cost me to uh, leave Hobart. <laughs> well, you know they used to throw fish. They, it was really it was quite a quite a fun time actually. Good to do on television, but so you made the good move. You get uh, caught up in those sideshows and find yourself not being quite as attentive to your studies as a as a young man should. A lot of fun though, those uh, Hobart games are always uh, just a hoot to attend. Quick shot, nice save by Matthews. Oh, Mulligan rather. <laughs> uh, now you I knew it. I'd call somebody <laughs> Matthews today. <laughs> Mulligan with a save, 19 seconds remain. Syracuse leads 18 to five. I saw the penalty earlier on Ancelone, he just took his gloves off because uh, with 29 seconds left, he's not gonna get back in there. 29 seconds left in the penalty, 19 seconds left in the game. Comes back to Hobart, man up situation. Syracuse leading by a score of 18 to five. Apparently was deflected. Uh, a referee made a call and uh, now they're gonna have the ball again. Hobart one last effort to score. Syracuse pouring it on. Out in front, quick pass gets to the crease. And that is your ball game. Well, we didn't expect it to be quite so lopsided. Roy Simmons hugged there by Casey Powell. His team is going to hang on to that. Ira Vanderpool's got his arms around the Kraus Simmons, his Kraus Simmons trophy. Got it tucked under one arm. He's not letting it go, and Syracuse won't have to let it go for at least another year. High fives all around for the Orangemen. They celebrate a big, impressive win over the Hobart Statesman. Defense the key, uh, tough to say. Uh, balanced scoring, we're going to talk about all that coming back. Syracuse beats Hobart. Final score, 18 to 5. Back with some final thoughts right after this. Syracuse University Lacrosse was brought in part to you tonight by Brian Lacrosse. The Syracuse Orangemen beating the Hobart Statesman. The final score tonight was 18 to 5. And Dale, just a dominating performance by Syracuse in every facet of the game. Absolutely. And most impressed with the defense. If you watch the whole game, you got a cut there from B.J. O'Hara talking about that people thought maybe there was a chink in their armor. It was defense. Boy, it wasn't tonight. Not only did they play great defense, they took the ball away. They created things. They scored. The defense I'm talking about just did a great job. So let's give them a lot of credit tonight. And balanced scoring as well. Ryan Powell, Casey Powell, but Matt Kataya with five goals. That really? Was yeah, we talked about that. They said, gee, if you shut off the Powells, who's left? Well, it's Matt Kataya. So they did a great job. Going to be interesting to see what comes up next with Georgetown. Well, that is our next game here on Super Sports. Men's lacrosse. The Georgetown Hoyas taking on the Syracuse Orangemen Sunday, May 5th. That is also our last program from Super Sports this year. For Dale Drypolcher and all of our crew here at Super Sports, I'm Rob King. Thanks for joining us.